Pass. Let me unzoom. Oh no, wait. The other way. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so today's video is a continuation of my first video for my new series. This thing is just gonna break all the way. Got no chill. There we go. Of my study abroad experience studying fashion and marketing in Milan, Italy. Yeah! So, the first video was a little bit about my actual studying part of the program, and this part is gonna be about the traveling part slash housing. So, I guess let's start from the beginning. So I ended up taking my first plane here from LA, San Francisco. From San Francisco, I went to Munich, Germany. And then from Munich, Germany, I went to Milan, Italy in Malpensa. So that was my landing, which ended up being a total of like 27 hours, like more than a day because I had three connections. Um, I also had a couple of planes that I ended up not making it. So I had to get like a new one. It was just a chaos. Um, also, I ended up losing my stuff in Milan, so I had to wait a little bit extra. And because I was arriving at a brand new country, I had people waiting for me from my program who were like gonna wait for me, take me to the taxi, do some paperwork before I could get out of the airplane. And yeah, so I ended up being the last one to get there, even though I was, I'm sure I was the first one who who like ended up leaving her house to go to Italy. But I ended up being the last one. I was so scared. I was like running. Once I got to Milan, the lady was actually still there for me. Just waiting for me. She was just literally screaming my name. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. And if you know me, I'm like really, really little. So it, I was like literally like, wait, don't leave me. Because I was so scared that they would leave me. But luckily she waited for me. And then she was like, okay, I'm going to get you into a taxi. No. Yeah, she took me to a taxi. No. Okay, never mind. Okay, so I ended up going into like this lobby where I had to do some paperwork before I could actually enter the country uh, because I was a student. So I had to do that and it took like two or three hours literally sitting with my luggage. It was such a chaos. And then I went down and I took a taxi. She didn't come with me to the taxi, which I was kind of scared and also didn't have like... The address, I did have it, but, like, in my bag. And I was, like, so tired and I couldn't find it. So I just told the guy, take me to Milan. And it's, well, it was kind of scary because everybody was just like, hey, man, in Italian, like, do you need a ride? And I'm like, yes, but, like, why is everybody asking, you know? Like, I was, like, kind of, like, sus. Like, I'm not trying to get kidnapped on my first few hours in Milan. So I ended up just finding other people for my program and we squished in into a taxi and it was a hundred euros which is technically a hundred and something dollars i was like are you I ended up splitting up the cost so that was really nice and yeah the taxi guy was nice enough to like help us get our luggage out so yeah eating i ended up getting there really late at night after doing all the paperwork getting into the taxi it was like an hour or something to get home like to like my apartment and then getting all the bags in and i ended up living on the sixth floor and we only had one elevator and it was super small and I was like, oh my god. Go with one bag at a time and coming down to the sixth floor, it was just so chaotic. What I expected when I signed up for this program, I intentionally signed up to have a roommate, at least one. I wanted two, but at least one. Um, but I guess it didn't happen because the story is the apartment complex was technically not done. So it wasn't really ready to move in. We didn't even have, even have a washer or a dryer. So, I guess the contractor said, oh, we're not going to be ready to house the students. But somehow, the program people were like, well, that's not our problem anymore. We paid. I paid. My school paid my program in Italy. And yeah, they were responsible for our housing. We were supposed to get there and just have a ha home, you know, like a place to stay. Um, but I guess it didn't happen and the guy was just kind of like, well, we give you the money So it's your responsibility like you better have this apartment complex done by the time they get here And I'm assuming because of COVID everything got delayed um, Which is understandable, but also I'm not very happy with how my housing experience went specific especially because it was my first time living alone and Yeah, like also in a brand new city, you know, that was definitely not what I expected 
And once I got there, you could tell that like the whole thing had been demolished and started off from scratch. So nobody had been into my room. Like it smelled like clean paint, clean wood, clean windows. Some of the windows of my roommates didn't even work. Like they would hang open and it was kind of scary, not gonna lie. But my room luckily was very well done. Um, I think I have a video. I'll try uploading a video for you guys. Um, but it was really, really nice. I had my own bed with sheets and pillow and everything. Like a lot of storage space in my closet. There was more space on my bed, a desk. Really nice chair. Um, a really nice chair. More space at the bottom of my bed. Um, what else? Really nice lighting and lamps. And I also had my own bathroom, which I never had my own bathroom. I was like, I was like screaming so happy um yeah I had like a really nice glass bathtub bathroom with a really nice toilet and a big get I think it's called and a sink with a nice mirror with nice lighting for selfies and everything if and more storage space in the bathroom and a really nice big mirror in my room and so, so I have a mirror here in my room so I was like when I got there and it was a big mirror I was like whoa so happy and the window was really really big but kind of weird like the style of windows in Europe are different than here but also because I lived on the sixth floor and the way or like the side in which my room was in the building it gave the perfect I'll show you guys some of the pictures I took of my window. I would get the most beautiful sunsets. And also you could see part of the city. And I was living by the Navigli River or Navigli area. Like probably like five minutes away from there. So you could see everything in the markets on the weekends. So it was really nice. It's also known for being like a night chilling place for drinking. For college students and just Italians. So it was really nice. Really nice views. Sometimes the sun would be like so bright and I think I did film a couple of videos on like my living area So I had my own room and bathroom, but it was kind of like a hall kind of like an apartment complex So everybody else also had their own room and bathroom um, in my apartment. Nobody had like roommates um, Some of the people in my program did live in like other units where they did share so their experience was a lot more different um, house days is also an option for people who study abroad, but because of COVID, I didn't have that option. So homestay is basically when you live with another family that is actually from the country that you're studying in. So yeah, that, I think that's pretty cool. Um, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much the options. I think you can also like buy your own apartment or rent your own apartment if you want, but I didn't do that. I thought that was a little bit more expensive. I know some girls did it for my program, but that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah. So technically, in total, I would say it was like $10,000 for housing, which is not a lot compared to what we have here in the States. I live here at home where I study now. Um, so I don't pay for campus housing, but... Like, looking back at how much I spent and how my room was and, like, the whole experience, I would say was definitely not expensive. I know $10,000 sounds like a lot, but it's not really compared to the experience that I had. Like, everything was brand new. I had my own bathroom. I had a cleaning lady. I had um, someone who would change my blankets and my pillows, like, every week. So, they would also come in and clean. So, Yeah. I cooked for my own food. I didn't have like a meal plan or anything like that. Other people did, but they also lived in other buildings, which is why they also had roommates. Um, so yeah, I know I wanted roommates, but since I got since I had already moved in, I didn't want to like move all of my stuff into like another part of the city. Like that was gonna be another hassle, like unpacking and packing and moving and yeah. So I just ended up staying where I got house in the first place. Some people did move, but you know that's you know open to anything um so more into my housing so i had to share a kitchen so my kitchen and my living room were shared we actually had two kitchens and one big living room had like a tv a sofa really nice tables to like hang out with friends um 
what else but the kitchen was like two kitchens it had like two areas so like five people shared one and five other people shared the other one fridge an electric stove and yeah that's pretty much it some storage space we had a big family kitchen table really nice lighting design everything was brand new they had like stoves and pots and like drinks not drinks cups utensils plates everything ready for us i did have to pay a little bit more but it was okay because i didn't want to buy like my own stuff i didn't want to because it's hard to go like i'll explain life in general in another video but i didn't want to like have to go to different stores to buy like this and that so i just ended up purchasing from them because they had everything ready for me um so yeah um i also sorry i get tired of like talking so much but I have so much to say so sometimes you'll, you'll hear that my voice is like whew, it's like relax but i'm like no i got so much to say so yeah we also had a balcony not every like flat or hall had a balcony but i was lucky to have one and I had one of the most beautiful views of milan um so yeah we also had like sitting areas some plants you can just go up there and chill I would like watch a movie and like drink some wine and some crackers or cookies or ice cream. There was a gelato place in front of me that was so so good. I also lived like 15 minutes right away from the Zomo so yeah everything was pretty close to me. I lived like 5 minutes away from the Navigli so yeah. And also we had like the metro station like right in front of me. So everything was very easily accessible. It was very easy to go to the airport and travel to like a different country, different cities. So yeah, everything was really fun. Um, I'll keep talking about my experience, what it was like living there, how to get around, familiar, getting homesick, um, traveling around Europe, like on a budget, like learning how to cook, taking classes, budgeting, because that's expensive. It's very expensive to study abroad. Um, so yeah, keep tuned in, um, like, comment, subscribe, definitely subscribe so you get a notification every time I post. I really hope you guys enjoy this whole series because I have so much to say. Like, it's really cool that now that I'm talking about it and, like, remembering the little stuff, I'm like, <laughs> I miss Italy. But I also have some videos, but I don't want to watch them because I don't want to get emotional because <laughs> I will cry. I haven't even looked at my pictures. I took like a lot of pictures and like stuff to decorate and make like a whole scratch book, which I haven't started because I know I'm gonna cry. I've been buying a couple of stickers to like put around, but yeah. If I ever do it, I'll probably film a video, but I don't know because it's like so sad for me because I'm like, I don't know when I'm going back again to Milan. I really miss it, even though it was kind of hard for me to like get used to a whole different country, place across the world like i couldn't even travel back home but yeah that was that's that was my housing situation pretty fun but yeah i hope you guys like this video I and i'll see you guys in the next one every time i say Bye. i was told when i get older all my fears would shrink but now i'm insecure and i care what people think